there was a bunch of people out here when I got here, so they're standing kind of close watching the goings on, which is good. Hi, ladies. They're staring at me. Ladies. They're already coming closer. They kind of alternate who leads the way. Um, and oftentimes, like when I come in, they're definitely the most nervous, like right after I enter the field, uh, which is why I make an effort to kind of increase the distance and not like immediately approach them because that would scare them more. Um, but they're getting way quicker to come over here and check out what I'm doing, which is good. Usually they kind of do this where they're doing the weird like wrap around, walking around around and then they'll come around the other way to get closer um but they're very interested in what people are doing at this point and i honestly think both of them have actually put on a considerable amount of weight it can't just be water weight at this point and it does make sense because they're both from more scrubby less um rich in foliage areas than i am here in the pacific northwest um so our grass is probably higher in sugar and there's also more of it and now they're being fed hay. They were also being fed hay at the BLM um, like capture facility they were at. But I would imagine like the breakdown of our hay here is different and that we just have more free access to it because we're not living in a desert. Yeah, and little Juniper, her roaning is just the cutest thing ever, I think. Um, I'm going to be careful what I'm doing here now because uh, I don't want to spook them and there's some tree branches that I stepped on last time and then the cracks scared them and I was like, damn it. But yeah. See how much quicker they're already approaching me though? Like I just got in here a few minutes ago so this is huge. Like they're way, way more curious and this is only day four. Hi guys. And I do come daily. Okay, this is 0.7% zoomed in, so it's less than regular vision. You guys, I wish I could put fly masks on you. You got boogery eyes because you're not used to the... Oh, good girl. Good baby girls. Good baby girls. She says, I sniff you. What are you? What are you? What are you, person? Ah, yes, that's a cellular phone. Yes, it's very interesting. I know. You guys have the teeniest, narrow little chests. <laughs> You're gonna broaden. Good girls. Brave girls. Honestly, what I find when I'm like gentling horses is that as soon as you can get them to the point where they'll let you scratch them, that's when things really progress. Because horses who haven't been around people and who have had to just get by with mutual grooming or rubbing themselves on trees and stuff, they're usually pretty itchy, um, especially at this time of year during shedding season for growing their winter coats. So as soon as they're comfortable enough to like actually be touched by you, once you can start grooming them, they typically come along pretty quickly because they realize how much more effective we are at finding the good spots and just getting groomed on demand. Um, so that's what I'm really looking forward to doing. Now I'm walking over to get hay and whenever I leave I do like a really wide berth because ideally when I'm moving about the field I don't want to compel them to move at all unless it's towards me to check me out because um, if I make them nervous and they move I have exceeded their comfort zone. So I always give them more room than I even think they'll need when I'm moving suddenly and like getting up and doing something because I don't want to scare them. The more times I can be here without making them feel like they need to increase the distance from me, the better and the quicker I will be able to get them gentled. Um, so that's kind of the goal. They saw me holding these bales and now they're wanting to come closer. So that's pretty cool. We'll see what they do. I'm going to just put this down right here and see what happens. And then I'm going to sit cross-legged in front of it. Technically, this is a bit of a lure, um, but they came over to me before I was close to them. So if they want to eat right beside me, that's great. They still have some hay left over there, so this isn't the only hay that they have. Um, and when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm really careful to make sure that like the food isn't the only thing that they have access to, because if this was their only flake of hay, then it would feel way more coercive. 
and it wouldn't be as nice because in order to eat they would have to be beside me whether they want to or not um but they chose to be here and yeah they're getting way way more comfortable this is awesome really really great hi Juniper is very, very curious. Mesa is like more brave than her because usually she's the one who makes the first initial move closer. Um, but she loses interest a lot quicker, even though she's not like feeling the need to get away due to fear necessarily. She's just less interested in like interacting with humans, it seems. Whereas Juniper is very, very curious um, and seems really interested in learning about what's going on. <laughs> oh. Good girl, and see she's coming closer even. She does not have to do this. Oh, she's touching my phone. Oh, you're so good. Imagine if they just grabbed my phone and ran with it. This is really good. So see, she has another pile further away from me, but she's choosing to come up here. Um, and this is something that I think honestly is quite remarkable about horses specifically, is the fact that they're such curious little animals that they want to come see what's going on. Look at how feathery she is. And they're just so curious. Um, if they weren't this naturally curious, it'd be a lot harder to start to get them over their fear when they're wild horses like this. So see, she heard something else there. I didn't move. Um, but like basically anything in the environment that stacks upon my presence here. So example, if an animal was going through the bushes over there and cracked a branch, they're 10 times, if not more likely to spook in these situations because they're already extending their comfort zone by letting me sit right here. Um, and I'm only at 0.6% zoom, so it's not a regular vision. This is 1% right here. So that's how close they actually are to me. I zoomed it out to now it's at 0.5 just so you can see them better. Um, but yeah, like they're already extending their comfort zone. So if any additional stressors stack, they're more likely to be reactive to that. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing new things or you have animals that are letting you into their personal bubble when they typically wouldn't. Um, anything new that happens can potentially set them off when it otherwise might not have. I'm turning my camera on this way so I can just see what Mesa is doing because she's probably going to come check me out from behind. She's doing a little circle. No, she's just doing a perimeter walk to make sure. <laughs> And now she's back. Yeah, and the other cool thing that I actually really liked, and people who've adopted Mustangs before probably already know this, but the BLM actually like trimmed them right before I got them, like about two weeks before, I think, um, which is awesome because then there's no perfect rush to just get them darted so that we could trim them. I'm assuming that they sedate all their horses and blow dart them um, to trim them and I'm assuming that's how these guys got done but it makes it really convenient for me because then essentially I have like five weeks before I even have to worry about getting them trimmed um, and since they're Mustangs typically a lot of the feral horses you've never needed to have trims and are just sustaining on grass. They don't grow quite as quickly especially through the winter um, as other horses who are on grains and lots of supplements so they'd probably even and be able to go like safely beyond five weeks without it being like noticeably long because they'd be naturally wearing their hooves out here and stuff um but it is nice to just have like the option to not have to worry about it immediately because if they'd never been trimmed they probably would have arrived here with really long hooves yeah and the little scrapes on their face are probably from them bonking their heads in the trailer because i don't recall seeing them prior to them being dropped off here so i'm guessing they got a little scared in the trailer and that's what it came from Look at Brave Mesa. Yeah, even when I'm like itchy or something and I have to move a hand, I'm really conscious about how I do it because I would ideally prefer not to scare them because um, they're already so far out of their comfort zone probably. Mesa's doing another walk around. Yeah, Junie arrived much more nervous, but she's actually coming down from that nerves um, quicker because she's more curious. I'm in a Mustang sandwich right now. So. Hi, Mesa. So smart. Ladies. Yeah, someone's doing construction over there in the bushes, so they're hearing sounds. Hello, June. Hello, you brave girl. Hi, June. Hello. Hi, Juniper. Hello, girl. Hi, little girl.
Come on, girls. Awesome. Good girl. It's cool that she's choosing to eat out of this pile even though she has hay over there. Yeah, because she's curious. This is she's, different hay though. She so really wants to touch right? your hat. Hi. She's going to touch you. Aren't you? I know. Good girl. There we go. There it is. She touched it, didn't she? You could totally see the little tug of war in her mind, right? I want to, but I'm scared. I want to, but I'm scared. I want to, but it's a little worrisome. Oh, and she says, now I'm brave. Look at me. Good girl. That's cute. You can see how she wants to, but it's like nerve wracking, right? Good girl. Good job. She says, I'm gonna come back and be a little bit more brave again. brain is thinking. Right? Okay. So the brain, the wheels are turning. <laughs> so that she can touch your hand, you mean? Yeah. Good girl.
what is human garbage. This isn't zoomed in at all. They're really that close. Really good about all that construction noise. You can see Judy's rodent. <laughs> yeah, be really careful though, because if they spook, you don't want them climbing you. Come taste it. Good girl. Good job. want to so badly. Look at how nice her feet are. She's like, what the hell are you doing? You weird human. Look at how nice your feet are. It's amazing what not being bothered by humans can do for your health. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. What do you think? Well, you girls are so nice and not nibbly. What do you think? Say hello, YouTube fans. Look at your narrow, tiny little chest. Way field, narrow. Right? And our field is kind of big. Because her property is deceiving because the field that she rents from those people, a lot of people think is hers. Girls. Mm hmm. Yeah, you guys are being very brave about all that construction noise. Four. Day four. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, but then we came in the day. Charlie's on my mom. Eat it. Eat it. Take it from me. Me on day one now. Yeah. No, I think that was day two. Isn't that scary? It's okay.